I've collected a whole bunch of fly reels over the years, and I have a few here that I'd like to show you. Um, right here, this is a skeleton fly reel that has a really cool design to it. And uh, here's a similar one, but, but really small, and it has a neat pattern on the front. Really old fly reel. Here's a English fly reel, a brass fly reel that's that's really cool and uh, presumably made out brass maybe so that it could be used along the ocean with the salt water. Um, over here is a fly reel that the manufacturers many decades ago when plastics kind of came into um, um, vogue they made these fly reels on a material called backlight and um, and so it's kind of a cool historic um, period of time with the fly reels. Um, right here's um, a reel that is made by Ross, the Ross reels, and it has a kind of a hollowed out center here. We call that large arbor. And the manufacturers of the fly reels, when they're making the fly reel, they will take the design of the fly reel and couple it with perfection of manufacturing and design plus perfection would presumably equal function. The fly reel would work under whatever circumstances and this fly reel right here is about as perfect as um, perfectly made as I can imagine and it functions really well under the the circumstances that it's it's required to. And some people approach music the same way. And I would caution against this. Some people believe, whether it be conductors or performers, that design, the composition, plus perfection equals beauty. But beauty is something different. Beauty involves our emotions and our, our thoughts about things and things we we can't quite speak and it's not the same as a just the function of a fly reel and when we approach music this way I believe that we often miss the course of what music is about uh, that music can be imperfect but still be beautiful um, because it contains the elements of us as humans just the same way is frankly a fly reel can be imperfect but be beautiful um, this fly reel, it may have been perfect when I got it, um, it, but it's not now, it's beat up, but it has my memories in it. Uh, I've caught hundreds of fish on this fly reel, so it has my memories in it, even though it's not perfect anymore. Or this fly reel here was never perfect. Um, it was a really cheap fly reel when I got it as a kid, it's one of my first fly reels I got and and uh, it's not perfect at all and it probably wasn't designed very well but it has some of my best memories as a kid with this fishing reel kind of like my memories at my first concerts in sixth grade or seventh grade that weren't perfect and the music might have not have been the most complicated but it has my memories in it and so it was beautiful in that way and it had an impact on me in that way. And I think when we approach music, we need to consider it in this way, um, that we certainly want to get the right notes, and probably all of us have a certain amount of um, perfectionist qualities as we approach music, but at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to achieve beauty in this one-time live experience for the audience and for us. And when we are going towards beauty, uh, we're trying to give part of ourselves. And so if we pursue perfection over that goal, uh, and, and it just becomes pure function, I think something gets missed. And many conductors and musicians uh, do this, and some of you will be the conductors or musicians in the next decades. And I would caution you not to pursue music this way uh, because you can, on the path to perfection, you very often will destroy people's souls 
Uh, you will you will cr have to crush them to get your perfection that you desire, and they may they may perform perfectly in the concert, but they've taken themselves out of it to do that. And when they've taken themselves out of it to do that, something was lost for you, for the performer, and for the audience for sure. So for sure, keep doing the best you can perform the most perfectly you can but the the goal is beauty and don't let that pursuit of perfection destroy the beauty 